at any point if it cuts out or anything. All right, here, sweetie. Okay, so our last week, what we talked about was going over small caps versus the large caps. Um, what we were saying was small caps tend to outperform it this time of the year, and that's exactly what we saw over last week. We had small caps IWM move 5.48% 5 5 versus the QQQ, which was only up 3.36%, or the S&P 500, was, which was only up 2% last week. So our small caps idea worked very, very well. Excuse me, baby, I'm doing something, okay? And so that worked very well for what we were looking into and what we wanted to do. One second. So, and then some of the names I was mentioned last week was SoFi. SoFi is up 15%, so it's up 21% since last week. Um, Carvana, which is one that we are in options for, actually just had its breakout today. So that's up about 45% in the last week and a half since, or in the last week. That was a massive move. We're up about 400% on our options. Um, that was fucking, that one's amazing, and I still think this one's going to continue. Um, another one I mentioned was Siri, which actually didn't have as much of a move, but it still looks very solid, in my opinion, here above this moving average. It's going to continue higher. Um, what were the couple of the other ones I mentioned was FRSH, which that one, again, that one was up 20% last week. And so you're seeing all of these small caps, which are having massive moves to the upside um what was the last one i mentioned uh, dropbox which this one is dbx it's a naturally slower stock but you still had a seven percent move in dropbox from last week so we see this crazy move in all of these small caps right now and so that's one thing that we are continuing to look into i want to see continuous strength in these small caps to see a further rally in the market and so see a broader rally so you get more strength across more sectors a um, couple of the um, sector weights that i look at a lot are the rsp which is the equal weighted s p 500 what that is is it doesn't put your market cap into perspective every single stock is equally weighted into this so when you get more of a broader strength move then you see bigger moves in this RSP versus you'll see in the S&P 500. And same with the QQ, I'll do the QQQE, which is the NASDAQ 100 equal weighted shares. And last week you saw this big move into a stage two breakout actually above these highs. So this was the highest point that created the slow. We had our breakout above that, a pivot. And now we're coming up looking at least for these highs or if not all-time highs so a lot of your rsp and your uh it's like spy and qqq they hit all-time highs today spy qqq hit all-time highs today spy is pennies off yes if you adjust for dividends it is at all-time highs so you'll see some people saying that this is at all-time highs and then you'll see other people saying that no it is not um what you really are is like the spx cannot be adjusted for dividends therefore that's actually the technical true price. So the SPX and the NDX have not actually hit all-time highs, but that's okay. The NDX actually hit an all-time high today. I think it was an all-time closing high today. Excuse me, sweetie. And so then back to our, I'm gonna change my screen into the Excel sheet that I have that we're gonna go over every week. So this is our trend journal. We see this last week, We last week we we're on day 29. We haven't had any sort of stress tests. We really haven't seen a push to the downside or any down take hardly at all on a closing basis um, since we even came in last week. So we're on day 34 of our market trend rally, uh, which is the fat, which is the longest trend rally we have had since uh it was i think may into july was the last trend and i'm pretty sure it went 55 or 60 days 
Um, so we could see a continuous move in this rally that we're having right now. Yes, everything is oversold. Yes, the leaders need to pause and or pull back for, and I'm looking for personally, I don't want any sort of new longer term swing trade type of buys um, um, for the next six to seven weeks after we see a pause. So we could see a continuous movement for the next 20, 30, 40 days. And that's perfectly fine. We'll be able to catch those intraday. We'll be able to play those as they come. But in a sense of a longer term, like a swing trade, like I was doing with Carvana just now, um, that's probably not going to be for another six to seven weeks, which would be ideal. I want to see things kind of calm down. We are seeing a lot of euphoria right now. And so let those people that want to buy late, let them buy late, let the euphoria kick down and then we can come up and scoop it up. In my opinion, any sort of pullback that we have over the next couple months is most likely going to be a buying opportunity coming into 2024. We see today, we see net highs outpacing net lows. So 52 week highs outpacing 52 week lows. You'll hear me talking about that a lot. What that is, is it shows the breadth of the market it shows how strong the whole general market is one second sweetie pie and so today we had a six to one it was 295 292 stocks hitting on the nasdaq 100 hitting 52 week highs versus only i think it was 50 or 60 um stocks hitting 52 week lows on the nasdaq and so that's definitely something that we do see, we are seeing is a broader strength market, which is what we want to see. What we're seeing right now a lot of times is you see one set of stocks going up, and then as that's going up, you see the net, another set consolidating and going sideways. That's what we want to see. There's not a heavy amount of selling. They're kind of, excuse me, excuse me, they're kind of drifting off to the side in low volume when you see a lot of these pullbacks and the drawdowns right now you're not seeing them in heavy volume they are in very very light volume which is what we want to see when you see pullbacks you want to see them at a light slope not at a heavy down slope you want to see them at a light slope coming into support and or a moving average and then with low volume and then on the push up You'll see a you'll see like a, a shakeout to the downside, and then a, on the push up you want to start seeing heavier buy volume, and so we haven't quite seen any sort of pullback, but that's what I will be looking for. Um, back to trading view, I want to go over some interest rates and um, TLT, which are the bonds. So the ten year interest rate is what most people look for when they are looking at interest rates. There are a lot of times you're seeing the 10 year because it is the mid the mid year interest rates. We had this wonderful cup and handle breakout on a technical standpoint. We had a wonderful cup and handle breakout and then a failed move to the upside and we are continuing higher. We are now below your 200 day moving average and it's starting to curl to the downside. I'm guessing most likely we're above all our short, we're below our, all our short term moving averages by a lot. Yeah, 10, 21, 50, all these moving averages were well below. So we're definitely in a bearish, short-term bearish environment for the interest rate. So my guess is we'll at least come down to this 3.5, 3.6 level, and then we might be able to base out here. Um, I don't, this would actually be bullish for the market. So we're, right now we're starting to see the Fed pause interest rates and when we start seeing that that actually tends to be bullish for the market so a downward push on these interest rates whoopsie is actually going to be more better for the market that we want to see and one thing i am looking at as well one second sweetie is the yield curve and i i talk about this a lot and i look at it a lot and you are seeing a flattening right now. So like right now you're kind of going up into into resistance into this 50 day moving average with a, this is your two year versus your 30 year interest rates, US 02Y minus US 30Y. Um, and I can send out this, uh, 
this watch list if anybody wants with the recap this is just my interest rate watch list it gives all the different interest rates that we have plus the different yield curves and what that is is the two year versus the 30 year the two year versus the 10 year the 10 year versus the 30 year um, so all these different yield curves that we that are very important on a macro economic standpoint we're seeing a lot right now we're starting to see this up, upward move into resistance and a potential head and shoulders type um, to revert into uninverted interest rates. So right now interest rates are inverted. So you see the four year is at 4.5, 4.4. The three month is still at 5.4, which is very high. And then the, the 30 year is at 4.0. So the two year is above the 30 year. That's what it means when I'm saying inverted. And when that happens, it, you tend to see more of a recession. We had, in my opinion, we had our recession. We're seeing GDP growth right now. We're seeing earnings, more earnings growth right now. And so you, we could be seeing a flattening, more of like an accumulation into a pull up for a inverted, um, for a non-inverted yield curve, which tends to show when the yield curve is regular, it's non-inverted, that's just regular, that tends to be happen during the stronger market cycles. Um, you're seeing right here, TLT. This is one that I'm that I keep watch of. These are just your bonds. They're in the inverse, the interest rates. Um, so this is had a huge move. In my opinion, this was major sellers exhaustion to the downside. Um, you see this incredible move right here where you push down and then you just get all this huge volume. We got the lowest level that since 2013, essentially. Let me see if it's different. There's the non-adjusted for dividends. I don't usually look with adjusted for dividends on. Some people, a lot of people will. Some like Weeble, it, by default, it is has your adjust for dividends. On TradingView, it's just this ADJ right here. I don't tend to look at it with them on personally. Um, and But you do get a little different look. Like right here, adjusted for dividends, we're at the lowest level since 2007 and 2006. If you, not, if you take that off and you don't adjust that for dividends, we're at the lowest level. We didn't even break 2013 lows. Um, so that's just something to keep an eye on just to be aware of. I don't necessarily use it too much in my trading. I just kind of started noticing it with NASDAQ hitting all-time highs and then some other people saying, oh, this isn't this is all-time highs. And so uh, personally, I just use it like this without the adjustment for dividends on. And so when we see, look at TLT here, we see a major move to the downside. This downside, this previous range right here from 2008, 2003, that's already kind of being broken and disrespected. So we could still see a further move to the upside. Um, I'd like to see, just like everything else, I would like to see somewhat of a consolidation or pullback, come back down into this 95 level and then hang out for a couple of weeks. And when I'm looking for consolidations, usually it's not just one or two days. I'm looking at two, three, four, five, six week consolidations for things to start building bases. And whether that be just going sideways for six weeks in a uh, up and down movement, whether it be some sort of pullback to the downside, move up in a double bottom form or like a cup and handle style, I'm looking more for a three to four to five, six week consolidation in a lot of the things I'm looking for. Um, that's just for the main reason to let this huge move that we've had digest a little bit. And right now, like TLT, I would probably be looking for it to come back up to this 108 level. If it can hold this 90, uh, 97, let's just say 97, 95, really this 92, but 95 ideally. One second, sweetie. And then I'd be looking for it to come back up to this level. We broke, I don't know if this is what people call turtle soup but we broke this trend line, this longer term trend line from 2022 to now. Um, so that's another sign, bullish sign right there. One second. Yes, this is recorded casino baby.
I'm having everything recorded. And so then, um, just like others, the TBT is inverse the TLT. This has had a huge move to the downside. It had a failed breakout above this uh, these highs from 2017. And so that's definitely failed, failed moves come fast moves. So if you see failed breakouts, a lot of times they pull back very, very fast. Did you already go over US 100? Um, kind of not, but not really. I, I will go over it in more in depth. So, uh, yeah, so this move, we're failing this even breakout to hold. It will probably come down to this 200 EMA, if not this 26 level. If we break this 200 EMA and start, right now this looks more like a stage 3 distribution. So we could still come back up to this 39 and it create a lower high and then come back down. So this might take another three, three, uh, three months, two months, something like that. So this isn't something I'd be too quick to short, but this is, I mean, interest rates are definitely, in my opinion, probably gonna continue lower over 2024. Um, somebody just asked about US 100, I'll re-go over that. We are at all time highs today on any chart you look at. This is the QQQ, um, which is the same as the ETF of US 100, um, very simple. We have this nice bull flag breakout. Actually, this is pretty cool. I didn't see that bull flag breakout right here. There's your flagpole. The theoretical measured move would be to take that flagpole and go to here. That's the theoretical measured move. Um, take that with a grain of salt, of course. So 275 would be the theory. Would be that we are just hitting all time highs. Like I said, we are one, two, three four, five, six, seven. We're now on our eighth week without a down tick on a weekly chart. Um, so personally, I'm not looking for new buys very much here. I'm looking more for pullbacks and or consolidations to like on very light volume to come back to previous resistance. I would love it if you, if like a QQQ came back down to this 393, even 388 level. That would be perfectly fine. Ideally, we want to keep our pullbacks within five to six percent. Um, that's really what we want to see for the for the most part. We want to see this 10 MA on a weekly hold. That's when it happens when we see the most the strongest movements is when it's above the 10 MA. And if that doesn't hold, then I'd be looking for like a 21 or 30 MA on a weekly chart to make sure that holds as well because they are all your moving averages right now. They're all pointing to the upside. You're very, you're in a strong, healthy uptrend. So there is no reason to try to short this right now. Don't try to call the top. Don't try to short this shit. Wait for a lower time frame consolidation, lower time frame distribution. If it happens, if you want to short this, don't just try to blatantly short it. And I see a lot of people trying that because we're at all time highs. We could continue. This is a very strong base right here. This isn't just a little five minute freaking base. This is a two year base that came down, only came down 20%, I think, or 30 per, yeah, it came down 35%, less, less than the entire market, really. Most other stocks went down 30, 40, went down 40, 50, 60, 70%. So this is only down, went down 35%. We are up a heavy amount. The volume, look at all this volume right here. You see heavy volume, heavy volume spikes, heavy volume spikes. Look at the clusters of volume spikes right here. Heavy volume. That's what we're looking for for accumulation. So I would like this to show some sort of a three weeks tight, some sort of three to four percent, five percent pullback. That would be perfectly fine in a longer term time frame. And so that's where I'm really looking for. To, I, I, it could continue higher. It most likely will. <laughs> so many people want a move pullback. So many people want it to go lower. So many people think, oh, it's at all-time highs. I want to short it. That it's probably not going to happen. We're probably going to continue this lockout rally that we've had. And that's what we've had. This is called a lockout rally um, these last eight weeks. And the lockout rally, what that is, is when you see more stock you see stocks and movements just go so freaking crazy that everybody's looking for pullbacks for entries but they don't get it and that's a technical and that happens at the beginning of 
every bull market. You see right here, you have a lockout rally coming up in 2020. You have a lockout rally coming out of the December 2018 crash. We built a base and now we are starting to have some sort of a lockout rally. So it's similar, very similar to this move right here in 2016 where we built a long two-year base and then started to break out. So I'm bullish going into 2024. I think 2024 is going to be bullish for the year. January will be our determination. So like I said last week, if January doesn't isn't bullish, then I the data has changed. I might do I might think somewhere else, but historically when January is bullish, the rest of the year is bullish. A 4% pullback in SPY to 453, $21. That would be perfectly fine as long as it just doesn't have some crazy down move if we have something like this where it's kind of more mellow then that's or even less like these right here where we're seeing it closing the weekly on the high end of the range that's going to be more bullish as well so we're looking for some sort of pullbacks if there is so like right now there's still setups that are happening um, and I'm going to go over a few that are not too extended. So I am looking at some of these for shorter term buys and going to be quick to pull the trigger and quick to you got to be quick to pull the trigger. But you also have to be quick to cut if it goes against you really fast. So a few that I am looking at right now, AI, I think this one has a wonderful base that it's formed. The weekly candle right now is starting to look mids. But if we can prop it up over the next few days, this will look much better. So we have, uh, everybody loves this stock. So we have this anchored view up from this previous high right here from August. Put the anchor there. We actually had a gap down on earnings and I was like, and it was not great earnings. The earnings were fairly bad in my opinion. So going from quarter over quarter, you're a negative for your EPS. Um, it's actually down and for revenue you're barely up for quarter over quarter and then if you go year over year your EPS is down as well minus 13 versus a minus 11 so barely down but your revenue is up 13 million so it is and it, this is a relatively small company and relatively new company still especially when it comes to revenue so the earnings right now it could as it's growing as a company it could for sure continue and better itself and so and everybody loves it ai is huge right now and look at this is the key of a lot of things that i'm looking at it's a very similar setup to what carvana had in my opinion you have these heavy volume spikes all as it's coming up here so look at all of these all these heavy volume spikes that's showing institutional buying this is on a daily chart and so then as it's pulling back and as it's going sideways look at how it's pulling back and it's lowering the sell volume is getting smaller and smaller and now you're starting and then you started to see this right here all of this like this the volume just kind of dry up and that's a volume dry up when you just start seeing much lower than average volume you see the average volume itself this white line is average volume you see that go from very very high to very very low and so that's where you're starting and now you start seeing very sneakily look at what happened on this red day you closed at the midpoint not at the lows look at what happened this redwood day was kind of fucked but you still closed at the midpoint And so this, and now these green spikes right here, this was a huge key day right here, the 23rd, 20, the 14th of December. You have a gap up, closed at, um, I'm sorry if you can hear my kids in the background, they're, in, they're insane. Closed up 11% on the day on higher than average volume. And then the next day was an inside day kind of, it was just kind of a slower day, but it closed at the highs and at the at the average true range highs of the previous day so that close out the previous day's highs as well and then another inside day and then today we had this move push to the upside kind of got rejected with the rest of the market um, but still closed more towards the higher end of the day's range so this is one i'm for sure still looking at 
and I think that it's not extended. It's more of my launch pad style of setup where you have all these moving averages set up all together. You have your right at the this anchored VWAP. So it's getting ready for a move. Um, so that's the whole thought is going to be that it's going to be a move to the upside. And so then another one, which isn't as fast, so like this one, I'd be looking for it to come up to back to this 45 level range where this anchored view off is from. That's a 35, that's a 40% move. That's going to be huge. Similar, and I mean, if you look at Carvana, look at this setup. It's very, very, very similar. You have a push, huge volume on the spy side, a volume dry up, and now starting to get, it's right around this level, which is where I bought and it's literally even the daily candle looks very similar it's right around this level where i bought carvana so i'm really thinking that this is going to be a good setup for the next few weeks to continue higher um so look at the differences and it's just you're above your 200 your 21 50 and 10 day moving average all kind of consolidating at once i don't have these on my charts all the time i just put them off and on you're above this anchored view up from this specific high and very similar to this. I mean, it's not the exact same, but it's very, very, very similar. So I really enjoy this one. I think this is going to be nice. Um, another one is CVS, which is not going to be as, quote, sexy um, because it's not going to be as fast. CVX naturally is, and you have to understand the characteristics of the specific stock that you are trading. CVX naturally is a slower stock. It's not going to move as fast. Um, it doesn't have the earnings. It doesn't have the in, quite as much institutional buying as in, as a what's it called as AI does. But if the market's strong and if we continue higher, you could see a ten to twenty percent move here. And the key right now is it's very similar to this spot right here, where the 200 day moving average is starting to go sideways. So I don't always like to buy as it's starting to go sideways. I think a lot of times it needs to go sideways for a longer period of time. So this is honestly more likely to fail, but it's also, you can see a quick 10 point move and then it fail after that. So it might be a quick in and out if it gives an, an entry. Um, right now, I don't, I'm kind of just waiting. And so, but that same style of setup above this anchored view up from this high, 10 MA, 21 MA, and 50 MA, all pointing up right at this same level. So that's kind of my setup that I mainly look at. Um, PayPal, somebody just asked me about real quick. PayPal is very similar. It's in the 4B right now is what this is called, um, not necessarily a downtrend it's not in a stage four downtrend where i would short it um, but it's more towards the end of a stage four where you're going to see pretty heavy rallies you're starting to see higher buy volume you're starting to see these buy spikes more but you have your 200 day moving average still pointing down and still below this 200 day moving average so with every stock i look for I'm looking as it's getting above the 200 day moving average, the 200 day has to be going sideways or up. That's one of my main things that I that I have to have. That's a rule of mine. And so if you start seeing something like this where your 200 day goes sideways and you get price above it and then wait path. So you see price go above this 200 day and then consolidate like it's like a lot of the other setups that I've been doing and then like a quick shakeout, then you could see a heavier move, something like that. Um, so that's it's not definitely it's not one that's actionable right now, in my opinion. If you got it down at these fifty dollar levels, I wouldn't sell it. Not yet, at least. I don't think it's going to come down that one for that low quite yet. It's got earnings coming up, which I would hold through their earnings personally. Um, they had decent, let me go through their earnings real quick. Um, November 2130, November 108. Yeah, 30% growth year over year for their earnings, 6.4 billion, 6.8 billion, 7.8 billion, 7.4 billion, one. So about a 12, 
16% roughly. That's just quick math. 16% growth for their um, revenue year over year. For quarter over quarter, 1.16, 1.30. They're about 1% up for growth quarter over quarter, which is good. At least they're growing. And revenue is about flat quarter over quarter, which is fine. It's actually better, but it's about flat. So what we could see is a... Um, and unfortunately, Amazon did just cut them. Um, so I don't know. I don't think that it's going to affect their earnings for this quarter, but that might affect their guidance. Um, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on. I would use as a line in the sand for me, I would just use this anchored view up from this low right here, which is right around $57. So if it goes below that anchored view up right there, then you're looking more bearish and you're probably going to come test these lows. If it stays above this anchored view up, which I think it will, it'll probably create some sort of higher low and then continue either sideways or to the upside on a monthly basis. You have, it's actually kind of cool. I, I kind of like that. You have these slower, it's slowing and you can see that. Let me get rid of all this shit. There we go. You can see it's starting to slow down with the selling. The selling's getting lower and lower. You have this bullish engulfing, almost try to bullish the engulf right here, and then a push up to the upside there. So this high level of 75 looks very nice to me on a monthly chart. Same with a weekly. Um, very similar to that one that we were just looking at that just broke out from that long-term downtrend. Um, I, it hasn't quite broken it though. And so once it breaks this longer term downtrend, then you're really going to start seeing a move at least, yeah, back up to the 75 level. But see right here, you have this little shelf. You could see something very similar to that. Where you see a one, two, three, four week pullback. And that's what I'm looking for. I want a four week, four week pullback and a lot of stuff to form this type of handle on these right side of a lot of these bases. Um, and I don't care if you're SMC or whatever you use, it's not, I'm not talking about like a cup and handle, it's just a short term pullback on lower volume. That's just what I call it, what I've been, always been known to it as. It's a type of a handle on a weekly chart. And so I'd like to form some sort of a handle right here and that would form a, low, a higher low to give a good stop loss and then look for a move back up to the 75 level here. Um, so right now, to kind of sum up the main keys, still small caps are, are on the way. I'm looking for a move above 202, this low right here, this high right here. I'm looking for a weekly close really ideally above that to make its move back up to 211 or even 227 for IWM to continue the strength and um in small caps if we don't actually get like a weekly close up here then we can form a what's a five three or four a week that would be however long as some sort of pullback to probably right around this breaker here which is also for value gap 200 day moving average my guess is if you put a if you put an anchor view up it's right going to be near this bottom anchor view up yep by yeah let's go right on the breakout week yep right there a lot of times if it's too far away with the bottom i'll do a handoff at the breakout week for because this is the week that it really showed pure strength or above this 200 day moving 200 week moving average on a weekly chart um you have this the three month look the one month looks great you're seeing a almost the strongest move you've ever seen in a two month basis on uh the logarithmic scale on IWM, which is really strong. And when you see small caps outperforming like that, that's when you really see the rest of the market continuing to go higher and you see more bull markets. So similar to 2020, we saw IWM just start moving very, very strong. And that's when we saw a lot more movement in the broader market. And so I'm looking for pullbacks. I don't think a lot of stuff, I think a lot of stuff is extended. There's not a lot of setups right now that have a good risk to reward. Um, another one, JLBY, 
kind of a shit coin. I don't really know the fundamentals of this. Um, I don't think they're great. Yeah, there's, there's no revenue, no terrible earnings. So this one, it's kind of more it, like it's similar to Microvision, but it has a nice base. And that's why I'm looking at it. I haven't been actionable, but it's not actionable yet. You're still below this anchored view up here, but you are above the anchored view up from the gap down right here and kind of consolidating above that. But I don't, the volume is not super heavy. So it's one that if the rest of the market's good, this could actually have a pretty good move. Um, because it is a smaller company and it, the risk would be very, 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 very small. I would do it something like this stop loss below this gap down. So right around here, so like a 5% stop loss. Bare minimum looking for this anchored view up for a 3 to 1. And then really ideally looking for somewhere up here for like a 50% move, which would be damn near a 13 to 1. Um, Carvana right now, that was, what did we get on this one? We got in here, stop below, below there. We're at, we're at a four to one. Actually, our stop was a little lower. We're at a five to one for Carvana. So something like that. And it would be, and it's very, very similar setup. I mean, all the, most of the setups I look for are this same setup right here. A base right at the 200 day moving average, a gap above, above the anchored view up, a three or four or five day consolidation for an entry, and then a continue higher, a push higher right here. That's the main setups that I'm watching right now for a lot of things. Under Armour was one I called, I, I actually, I missed my entry. I didn't fucking have a chance to get in this. Is this the, hold on, which one's the class A shares? This one's a class A share. So just like everything, you have the amazing buy volume right here. This is, is another thing that I look for is this heavy buy volume. That's showing institutional institutional buying. This heavy buy volume, a previous high right here. You're above the anchored view up from this previous high on a nice high volume up day. Consolidate for one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten days roughly. Consolidate for a week or so, two weeks, and then blast off higher. And then over the last two days, this has gone just about ten percent, nine percent actually to be exact, not exact but more exact. And so, um, there's not a lot that looks like this right now, but if I'm finding it, this is what I'm looking for. These are very nice setups. Um, Palantir doesn't look great. See the sell volume on this? I don't really like that sell volume. SYM is one that actually looks really good. Previous high here. Consolidating gap up above this previous high. Consolidating above this previous high. Looking to take that high minimum. And so that would be just to there, 14% move. A technical measured move would be 30 to 63, $33. I wouldn't even consider that. Let's do half of that. Um, so about $16, so about a 30% move from here. So this is one, another one that I think is gonna be very strong. You have a previous, strong previous uptrend, a base that it's building over the last year, six to seven months or so, and then a potential push higher, a higher low and a potential push higher. Coming into this weekly fair value gap, had a push, good push off of that. Look at the volume here on the push up and then dried out volume on this down move. And that's what we like to see. That's what I want to see. So that's it for me. Um, not a lot of setups too much right now. We'll probably continue to push higher for another 15 days, couple of weeks probably we'll see. We're not showing any signs, any real signs of stopping right now. So I'm not really looking for any signs of stopping. Um, so, but once we do get a pullback on a higher time frame, that will be a buying opportunity. In my opinion, it will most likely be a buyer opportunity somewhere around 390, 395 on the queues would be ideal. That's what I would really, really, really like. Even down to 385 would be fine. Hold this gap up would be my, my key. I want to hold this gap up.
So thank you guys. If you have any questions, let me know before I head out. And if not, um, that'll be that. I will be, yes, I will be here next week. Um, I will not be here in the, for the morning streams after Wednesday next week. But other than that, I will be here. I will be on chat, um, but I won't be, won't be able to stream. Can you send the interest rates watch list? Yes, I will send that in the recap. Oh, quick question for anybody that has, that downloaded this favorites watch list. Does it have these, um, these sections that I set in here for stage one, small caps, um, spy on pullbacks, and then building bases? If you do know, let me know. If not, um, I can take screenshot to show how I put these into sections. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, I will send, I'll send some screenshots for that to show how, how I'm, because there's a lot of names. So I'll send the screenshots of how I'm organizing some of these names as well. So I appreciate you guys for coming. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions, just at me and uh, I'll catch you. Have a good weekend. Have a good, have a good Christmas.